It's Tuesday, September 20th, 2022. I'm Jackson Bird. Today, how did Saturn get its jaunty tilt and cool rings? A new study says it could have been caused by a hitherto unknown ancient moon that got torn apart by its planet. Plus, new findings on just how much misinformation is being spread on TikTok. Here's some cool stuff for your ride home. We've long had many questions about Saturn. Chief among them, why is it tilted, about 27 degrees on its axis? And where did those spectacular rings come from? And why are they, as some data has shown, so much younger than the planet itself? Like, billions of years younger. Those two hallmark features of the planet, the tilts and the rings, already work in concert with one another. If it weren't for the rings, it could be more difficult for us to visually observe that the planet is tilted. And if it weren't for the tilts, we would barely be able to see those rings, so thin as they are proportional to the planet itself. Proportional being the operative word here, since those rings actually weigh 15 million trillion kilograms, being made up mostly of ice with some rock and metals. But are the two linked in more ways than just convenience for our own observations? A new study published last week in the journal Science thinks they might be, and further proposes that Saturn's rings are actually the debris of an ancient icy moon that was knocked off its path by a bigger moon and gobbled up by Saturn's gravitational pull. Explaining how Saturn got its tilts, how the rings formed, and why the rings are only about 100 million years old, while the planet itself is 4.5 billion years old. Now, one of the going theories for Saturn's tilt since the early 2000s has been that the planet is trapped in a gravitational association with Neptune. As Phil Plate explains in his Bad Astronomy column over at Sci-Fi Wire, quote, A key point is that Saturn's spin axis undergoes precession, wobbling around in a circle, changing its orientation on the sky like the motion of a dying top. Earth's axis does this every 26,000 years, due to torque from the moon. But in Saturn's case, astronomers noticed that the time it takes Saturn's spin axis to precess once is very close to the time it takes Neptune's orbital axis to precess once as well, roughly 2 million years, end quote. So, astronomers have thought the two could be connected. But observations from the Cassini mission, which orbited Saturn from 2004 to 2017, might have thrown a wrench into that hypothesis, indicating that Saturn is no longer under Neptune's grasp. Quoting MIT News, With observations taken by NASA's Cassini spacecraft, scientists found that Titan, Saturn's largest satellite, or moon, was migrating away from Saturn at a faster clip than expected, at a rate of 11 centimeters per year. Titan's fast migration and its gravitational pull led scientists to conclude that the moon was likely responsible for tilting and keeping Saturn in resonance with Neptune. But this explanation hinges on one major unknown, Saturn's moment of inertia, which is how mass is distributed in the planet's interior. Saturn's tilt could behave differently depending on whether matter is more concentrated at its core or toward the surface, end quote. The Cassini mission's grand finale was an extremely close approach to precisely map the gravitational field of the whole planet, which can be used to determine the distribution mass in the planet. Using modeling of the interior of the planet to determine that distribution mass, which matched the gravitational field observed by Cassini, the new research team was able to pin down the moment of inertia, and it revealed that Saturn was just outside the resonance with Neptune. It's possible they were once in sync, but they aren't now, according to this data. So, they carried out a number of simulations to determine what else could be causing this tilt. Eventually, they hit on the idea of a moon being able to affect the precession if it were removed from the equation. 
So then they went about calculating the mass, orbital radius, orbital dynamics, and other properties that such a moon would have to have and ran further simulations. And the moon that they came up with that, just to be clear here, doesn't actually exist but could have existed at some point, would have been about the same size as Saturn's third largest moon, Iapetus, or about 1,500 kilometers in diameter. Nicknamed Chrysalis, because as lead author and MIT professor of planetary science Jack Wisdom says, quote, Just like a butterfly's chrysalis, this satellite was long dormant and suddenly became active and the rings emerged, end quote. The moon would have been made almost entirely from water ice and positioned between the orbits of Titan and Iapetus, orbiting for several billions of years just, as Marina Corrin at the Atlantic puts it, quote, minding its own business, doing moon things. End quote. Until, quoting again from Sci-Fi Wire's Bad Astronomy, like Titan, it too would have slowly moved away from Saturn over time. But at some point, it would have moved into a resonance with Titan, meaning the time it took to orbit Saturn once was a simple multiple of Titan's period. And when this happened, the influence of Titan on Chrysalis grew huge. It destabilized Chrysalis's orbit. Using computer models to simulate the hypothesized moon's orbit, they found that Titan could eject the moon out of the system entirely, but in many test runs, it actually flung the moon close to Saturn. So close, in fact, that the immense gravity of Saturn would have ripped the moon apart. Much of the debris from Chrysalis would have fallen into Saturn, but a substantial amount would have stayed in orbit around the planet as a huge and broad ring of debris. End quote. And thus, we have Saturn's rings. The team's modeling also showed that all of this would have happened between 100 and 200 million years ago, which lines up with previous studies indicating the age of the rings to be about 100 million years old. And it could also answer the question of why Titan itself doesn't have a perfectly circular orbit, but is rather a bit elliptical, a phenomenon that no models have previously been able to explain. So, this lost moon theory really answers a lot of curiosities about the ringed planet. But is it all too convenient? Scott Tremaine of the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, who was not involved in the study, called it remarkable and plausible. He told The Guardian, quote, We will never know for sure if an extra satellite was once present in the Saturn system, but explaining several puzzles with one hypothesis is a pretty good return on investment, end quote. Giacomo Lari, a research fellow at the University of Pisa who last year published research on the influence of moons on Saturn's tilt, but which presumed the planet is still in resonance with Neptune, was more skeptical, telling The Atlantic that the study, quote, needs a fine-tuning of all the elements at play, end quote, and calls it, quote, a succession of unlikely events, end quote. Plate at Sci-Fi Wire says, quote, It's a pretty interesting idea, and it winds up explaining a lot of weird stuff about Saturn. That doesn't mean it's right, though. Just that it's consistent with what we see now and makes sense physically. Still, scientists like it when one idea explains multiple odd things. Occam's razor leans toward one thing having multiple effects. End quote. And lead author Wisdom, for his part, even told MIT News, quote, It's a pretty good story, but like any other result, it will have to be examined by others. But it seems that this lost satellite was just a chrysalis waiting to have its instability. End quote. And as Corin at The Atlantic wrote, quote, The tricky part about understanding Saturn, or any planet, is that change happens on far greater timescales than we human beings are capable of comprehending. We can see the solar system only as it is now, and now is an infinitesimal point in cosmic history. So we rely on the measurements we have and imagine pasts that might have been, weighing potential theories that could explain what's out there today. Unless you travel back in time 4 billion years and observe the evolution of the solar system, you'll never really know, says astronomer Z. Vrugazinski. And continuing from Corin, a couple weeks ago, I did my own very unscientific check-in with Saturn using a telescope that my neighbor had set up on the roof of our apartment building. It looked the same as it always does, like a little bumblebee in the darkness, its bright rings jutting out like wings on either side. 
Tell us your secrets, Saturn, I thought, and those of your moons, too. The dozens we've discovered, the ones we haven't yet detected, and those that may be long gone, lost before anyone was around to wonder. End quote. And if you want to do your own check-in on Saturn to wonder at its lost secrets, Plate notes that Saturn is visible in the night sky through September and October, appearing like a yellowish star just after sunset, not too high off the horizon if you're facing southeast, and if you live roughly along 40 degrees north latitude. So places like Boulder, Colorado, Philadelphia, and roughly thereabouts around the globe through parts of Spain, Italy, Greece, Japan, and more. I will put a viewing guide from Earth Sky in the show notes for more tips. That TikTok, like every other social media platform, contains misinformation is no shock. But that its search results suggest misinformation almost 20% of the time is pretty damning. This is according to a new study conducted by misinformation monitoring firm NewsGuard, which comes on the tail of TikTok COO Vanessa Papas testifying before U.S. Congress last Wednesday on TikTok's ties to China. TikTok is owned and operated by Chinese internet conglomerate ByteDance, which in turn is partially owned by the Chinese government. Despite this, the app is actually banned in China. Quoting the New York Times, The criticism of TikTok, one of the world's most popular apps, gained momentum this summer after BuzzFeed News reported that TikTok's American data was still accessible in China earlier this year. After the articles, numerous lawmakers and regulators demanded answers from TikTok and its chief executive, Xiaozi Chu. Some also asked Google and Apple to ban downloads of the app on their digital storefronts and called on the Federal Trade Commission to investigate the company. The app's popularity has nonetheless continued to grow. More than a billion people use TikTok, flocking to its feed of seemingly unlimited videos for content ranging from makeup tutorials and lip syncing to political rants. In response to the questions, ByteDance has raced to build a lobbying operation that can counter its critics. It spent roughly $5.1 million on federal lobbying last year, according to Open Secrets, a research group that tracks money in politics. It sends congressional staffs positive news articles about the app and has pushed back aggressively on the recent media reports. End quote. In the hearing, which also included executives from YouTube, Twitter, and Meta, Pappas repeatedly said TikTok has never sent data to the Chinese Communist Party, that it would not cave to demands from them, and that it's not actually headquartered in China because it doesn't have a headquarters as a distributed company. Even as TikTok works privately with President Biden to mitigate government concerns and begins routing new traffic through American-owned Oracle, this new study from NewsGuard has sounded the alarms once more. Their investigation found that nearly one in five search results on prominent news topics contained misinformation. Searching for neutral phrases like 2022 election, climate change, and COVID vaccine delivered videos containing false claims within the first 20 results, and often within the first five. More concerning, in my opinion, is that when you typed in those phrases, TikTok's search suggestions were much more controversial. Quoting NewsGuard, For example, when a user enters the term climate change, TikTok suggests searches for climate change debunked and climate change doesn't exist. For a user who searches for COVID vaccine, TikTok suggests a search for COVID vaccine injury, COVID vaccine truths, COVID vaccine exposed, COVID vaccine HIV, and COVID vaccine warning. A search for January 6th yields suggestions for videos proclaiming January 6th footage being let in and January 6th Antifa, among others. In contrast, Google suggested terms that were more straightforward. For example, searching COVID vaccine on Google prompted walk-in COVID vaccine, which COVID vaccine is best, and types of COVID vaccines. None of these terms was suggested by TikTok. End quote. And NewsGuard notes that even when the search results didn't include misinformation, they were much more polarizing and hyper-partisan than Google results. 
Now that bit isn't super concerning to me, since TikTok is a platform on which people express themselves. So if someone has strong opinions on a political candidate and makes a TikTok about it, that seems like fair game. But it does become concerning when that hyperbolic partisan video is surrounded by videos containing misinformation about the issues. And it's extra concerning when put in context with recent findings from an internal research study by Google that found that 40% of Gen Zers use TikTok, Instagram, or Snapchat instead of search engines like Google. For product recommendations and restaurant reviews, you know, that's one thing. But if you're getting the bulk of your information about current events, about health, about the environment, from opinionated posts, often under the guise of being educational or debunking without any credentials or citations to back it up, that is concerning. And combine that with this new finding that that increasingly popular source of information for younger people is suggesting controversial and misleading search terms, then yeah, I'd say there's a reason to be worried. NewsGuard founder Stephen Brill told the Associated Press that he questions whether ByteDance is doing enough to stop misinformation, or if they are maybe deliberately allowing it as a way to sow confusion in Western democracies. He said, quote, it's either incompetence or it's something worse, end quote. TikTok has responded to this study saying that its community guidelines prohibit harmful misinformation, that it removes harmful content, and that it tries to promote authoritative content. Now, all of that is technically true, but like with every social media platform, it's just not enough. Too much still gets through. As AP points out, last year TikTok removed over 102 million videos for violating its community guidelines but less than 1% of those were due to harmful misinformation. Now, for their part, TikTok did remove all six videos that NewsGuard sent to them as false or misleading, but again, their AI and human moderators didn't catch those before NewsGuard and who knows how many others saw them. Then, just for a couple more examples of the kinds of things NewsGuard found, DIY recipes for making hydroxychloroquine tons of recipes for herbal abortion methods, posts claiming to prove the Bucha massacre in Ukraine was faked, countless videos about the January 6th insurrection being faked and the 2020 election being stolen, as well as the Uvalde Elementary School shooting being planned. Again, these were videos found within the top 20 search results for either neutral versions of those topics or with the TikTok-suggested search terms that popped up when searching the neutral terms. You can see screenshots of some of these suggested searches and TikToks at the NewsGuard report in the show notes. And a quick note on their methodology. The so NewsGuard specifies that they used new TikTok accounts on all of their tests. TikTok quickly creates a hyper-specific algorithm for its users, featuring suggested videos on what's called a For You page. So while using new accounts is kind of the only way to have conducted this study neutrally, and certainly raises alarms about the kind of content a new user could encounter when using the app the first few times, it also means that someone who's been on the app for a few months or a few years may not be fed quite as much misinformation, or maybe they'd be fed more, it all depends on what TikTok has decided their interests are. Mashable conducted their own tests following this study using an existing Australian account and found, quote, only innocuous phrases such as getting my COVID vaccine when searching for COVID vaccine. However, typing in climate change did cause TikTok to suggest the search term climate change is a myth, end quote. So again, what NewsGuard found is not every single person's experience on TikTok, because every single person's experience is so different. But this stuff is out there, and for users utilizing the platform as a search tool, instead of using a traditional search engine which would return much more neutral or verified information, it's even easier to find thanks to TikTok's troubling suggested searches. Although those are also likely to change the more you use the platform and it changes to match your determined interests. But like every social media platform right now, combating harmful misinformation is like a game of whack-a-mole. But it's a game that I need the executives of these platforms to admit that they're not as good at playing as they think they are. All 
All right, well, that is going to be it from me for today. This show was produced by Ride Home Media. I'm Jackson Bird, and I will talk to you again tomorrow.